All right. Okay. Hey, y'all. Hello. 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 Yeah, good, good. <laughs> One of the things I've noticed in 30 years of teaching the course is every time I go through a big shift in my consciousness, my classes change. You've heard, probably heard me say that before. You know, it's like most of the people here today, a lot of the people here today are brand new people. And uh, it's a lot less people that's usually here, which, is, which also corresponds with the change in consciousness because when you shift, besides everybody being exactly where they need to be, when we shift, sometimes people leave our lives and some people come into our lives. And so what I'm learning more and more on the spiritual path is, is, is to be willing to see relationships just like you see waves coming up on the beach. And, and then they, uh, either one after the other. And so what I like to do, I like to do uh, as part of a centering, one of my favorite Course in Miracles workbook lessons. And I like to do it as a dramatic reading. And so some of you might want to close your eyes. Excuse me, just turn this light on. Some of you might want to close your eyes and listen. Some of you might want to watch. And some of y'all might want to think about the uh, the new TV season. Whatever it is that, whatever it is that will occupy your mind while I'm doing this. Okay, so take a breath. The title of this is I Am Entitled. Mm -hmm. to miracles. Mm -hmm. I am entitled to miracles. You are 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 entitled to miracles. Now, the Course in Miracles defines a miracle as a <clears throat> state of completion and abundance. So you are entitled to states of completion and abundance. You are entitled to states of completion and abundance. You are entitled to states of completion and abundance. It also says a miracle is a correct perception. That if we have a correct perception, it's a freaking miracle. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a, so a miracle is us seeing things correctly. I love that. So I am entitled to correct perceptions. 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 You are 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 entitled to miracles. You are entitled to miracles because of what you are. You will receive miracles because of what God is. And you will offer miracles because you are one with God. Again. How simple is salvation? Salvation is merely a statement of your true identity. We're going to celebrate your true identity today. We're going to celebrate today. We're going to celebrate your true identity today. We're going to celebrate your true identity today. Your claim to miracles does not lie in your illusions about yourself. Your claim to miracles doesn't lie in your false ideas about yourself. Your claim to miracles doesn't depend on any magical powers you have ascribed to yourself. Your claim to miracles do not lie in your false ideas about yourself. Your claim to miracles does not depend on any magical powers you have ascribed to yourself. Your claim to miracles do not depend on any of the rituals you have devised. <laughs> your claim to miracles is inherent in the truth of what you are. You deserve miracles just because of what you are. You deserve miracles just because of what you are. You deserve miracles just because of what you are. It is implicit in what God your creator is. It is implicit in what God your creator is. Miracles, your claim to miracles was ensured in your creation and your claim to miracles are guaranteed by the laws of God. Your claim to miracles are guaranteed. You have guaranteed miracles. You have guaranteed miracles. You deserve guaranteed miracles. Mm -hmm. You deserve guaranteed miracles. Mm -hmm. Today, 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 we will claim the miracles which are your right. Since miracles belong to you, 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 miracles belong to you. You have been promised full release. You have been promised full release 
from the world of fear you made. You have been promised full release from fear. You will be fully released from fear. You've been promised that you will be fully released from fear. You will be fully released from fear. You have been assured that the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God can never be lost. The kingdom of love is within you. The kingdom of love is within you. The kingdom of love is within you. You can never lose the kingdom of love. You can never lose the kingdom of God. You can never lose the kingdom of love. I can never lose the kingdom of love. I can never lose the kingdom of God. I can never lose the kingdom of love. We ask no more than what belongs to us in truth. We're just asking for what truly belongs to us. We're asking for what truly belongs to us. We're asking for what truly belongs to us. Today, however, we will also make sure that we will not content ourselves with less than what belongs to us in truth. We will not be satisfied with less than what belongs. Don't be satisfied with less than what belongs to you. Don't be satisfied with less than what belongs to you. Don't be satisfied with less than what belongs to you. Don't be satisfied with less than what belongs to you. We're going to begin our longer practice periods by telling yourself, tell yourself quite confidently that you are entitled to miracles. Anybody that feels like saying it together, I am entitled, entitled to, to miracles. miracles. Again, I am entitled, entitled to, to miracles. miracles. Closing your eyes, closing your eyes, close your friggin' eyes. Huh. <laughs> I'm gonna close mine too. Okay. Remind yourself that you are asking only for what is rightfully yours. I am asking only for what is rightfully mine. I am asking only for what is rightfully mine. I am asking only for what is rightfully mine. I am asking only for what is rightfully mine. I am asking only for what is rightfully mine. I am asking only for what is rightfully mine. I am asking only for what is rightfully mine. I am asking only for what is rightfully mine. Next, remind yourself also, remind yourself also that miracles are never taken from one and given to another. Miracles are never taken from one and given to another. Miracles are never taken from one and given to another. Miracles are never taken from one and given to another. Miracles are never taken from one and given to another. Then remind yourself that in asking for your rights, you are upholding the rights of everyone. In asking for my rights, in asking for my rights, I am upholding the rights of everyone. In asking for my rights, I am upholding the rights of everyone. By asking for my rights, I am upholding the rights of everyone. By asking for my rights, Miracles do not obey the laws of this world. Miracles do not obey the laws of this world. Say it again. Miracles don't obey the laws of this world. Miracles do not obey the laws of this world. Miracles merely follow from the laws of God. Miracles follow from the laws of love. See, miracles follow from the laws of love. Miracles follow from the laws of God means miracles follow from the laws of love. Miracles follow. Miracles follow from the laws of God. After this brief introductory, after this brief introductory phase, wait quietly. Wait quietly for the assurance that your request is granted. Your request is granted. My 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 request is granted. <sighs> You have asked for the salvation of the world and for your own. It's the same as saying you have asked for the peace of the world and for your own peace. You're asking for the peace of the world and you're asking for your own peace. You have requested that you be given the means by which your peace is accomplished. You requested that you be given the means by which your peace is accomplished. You requested 
that you be given the means by which your peace is accomplished. I'm requesting that I be given the way that my peace is accomplished. I'm requesting that I be given the way that my peace is accomplished. I'm requesting that I be given the means by which this is accomplished. You cannot fail to be assured in this. You cannot fail to be assured in this. You can't fail to be insured in this. You are but asking that the will of God be done. I am asking that the will of God be done. I am asking that the will of God be done. I am asking that the will of God be done. I am asking that the will of love be done. I am asking that the will of love be done. I'm asking that the will of God be done is to ask that the will of love be done. In doing this, you don't really ask for anything. In doing this, you do not really ask for anything. You state a fact that cannot be denied. The fact that you accept it must be so. It's a fact. You've accepted. You've accepted. You've accepted. You've accepted that you are deserving and asking for the miracles that are your right. The Holy Spirit, the voice for God, the voice for truth. The Holy Spirit, the voice for God, the voice for truth cannot but assure you that your request is granted. Your request is granted. The fact that you accepted this must be so. There is no room for doubt and uncertainty today. There is no room for doubt and uncertainty today. We are asking a real question at last. At last, we are asking a real question. The answer is a simple statement. The answer is a simple statement of a simple fact. The answer is a simple statement of a simple fact. You will receive the assurance that you seek. I will receive the assurance that I seek. I will receive the assurance that I seek. I will receive the assurance that I seek. So our shorter practice periods will be frequent. Our shorter practice periods will also be devoted to a reminder of a simple fact. Tell yourself often today. Tell yourself a lot of times today. Tell yourself a lot today. Tell yourself often today, I am entitled to miracles. 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 I am entitled to correct perceptions. 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 The Course says a miracle is a healing. I am entitled to healings. 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 Ask for miracles whenever a situation arises in which miracles are called for. Ask for a miracle whenever a situation arises in which your miracles are called for. Ask for them whenever a situation arises in which they are called for. You will recognize these situations. You will recognize the situations that arise that call for miracles, that call for correct perceptions, that call for healing. And since you are not relying on yourself since you are not not relying on yourself to find the answer the miracle the correct perception since you are not relying on yourself to find the miracle you are fully entitled to receive it whenever you ask. Since you're not relying on yourself to find it, you are fully entitled to receive it. Since you're not relying on yourself to find the answer, the correct perception, the miracle, you are fully entitled to receive it whenever you ask since you're not relying on yourself to receive it. The reason why you can receive it is because you are no longer relying on yourself to receive it. Remember to not to be satisfied with less than the perfect answer. Remember to not be satisfied. You know you're good at not being satisfied. You know you're great at not being satisfied. So remember to not be satisfied. Remember to not be satisfied. I love it. Remember to not be satisfied. 
Remember to not be satisfied with less than the perfect answer. Be quick to tell yourself should you be tempted. Be quick to tell yourself when you're getting ready to go off. Be quick to tell yourself when you're feeling angry. Be quick to tell yourself when you're feeling afraid or tempted. Tell yourself, I will not trade miracles for grievances. 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 I want only what belongs to me. 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 God has established miracles as my right. 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 Love has established miracles as my right. So we're going to say shortly, I am entitled to miracles. I am I am entitled to miracles. 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 We are 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 entitled to miracles. You 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 are entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. Cha cha cha. 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 I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. Now the only rules are you don't have to believe any freaking thing you hear me say. Accept it, welcome it. You might not like it, you might not understand it, you might go to sleep, you might have all kinds of resistance, you might think I'm crazy, you might think we're crazy, you might think you're crazy for being here, you might feel good about yourself, you might feel inspired, you might feel at home, you might feel enlightened, you might feel happy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's the use of the ideas that will show you that the ideas are true, period. What I'm going to talk about today is a section called The Function of a Teacher of God. It's, on, it's in the Teacher's Manual, page 19. Now, I'm going to break this down. I've been doing this Course in Miracles for 30 years, and it uses a lot of religious terminology to, to describe universal spiritual truths. So I'm going to read it the way it's written, pretty much, and then I'm going to share with you and come right back and say it again, but with the definitions that the Course itself uses. So I'm not giving you my opinion of what the Course is saying. But I'm going to cover a whole paragraph, let me get through the paragraph, then I throw it over for questions and discussion, and then I cover some more. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. So try to hold back from interrupting me while I'm going through the paragraph, because usually what happens is that the person wants to interrupt me when their own ego feels threatened. <laughs> So that's what the Course says, that most interruptions are just you feel threatened because of something you heard and you don't want to hear it, so you ask the question to stop the train of thought. And I went, dog, that's deep. I thought it was because I was interested. 
the truth is, you know, I'm like, oh, because I didn't know, it was a, if you trying to stop what's being said and analyze it, which is just a way to not hear the whole thought. And I went, oh, yeah, this, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to be insulting, I'm just telling you what the Course says. So be, be clear that that's all I'm ever doing. I'm just telling you what the Course says. My personal opinion can sometimes be much worse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> much less loving than what the Course of Miracles comes up with. Now, wouldn't you agree that about yours? That your judgments are usually less than loving? Yeah, yeah in most cases. So anyway, the Course calls us patience, which I think is funny in itself. It calls us patience. And so it says, if the patient must change his mind in order to be healed, what does the teacher of God do? If, 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 if a person has to change their mind in order to be healed, what do you do? Change your mind. If a, person, if a person has to change their mind in order to be healed, but another person has to change their mind in order to be healed, said, so what do you do? Because it says, a teacher of God is a demonstrator of love. The Course says, a teacher is a demonstrator and God is love. So a teacher of God is just another term for demonstrator of love. So we say we want to be demonstrators of love, so the Court says if another person has to change their mind in order to be healed or happy, if the other person has to change their mind, I say, well, what do you do? What's your role with your family? What's your role with your friends? What's your role with your mate? Good question. Then it says, can you change the patient's mind for him? Can you change the other person's mind for them? Well, certainly not. You can't change anybody else's mind for them. For those already willing to change their minds, you have no function except to rejoice with them. So if you're with somebody that's already ready to heal and be happy and change their mind, then you're just supposed to party with them. <laughs> you're you're supposed to, you're supposed to, how do you define party? You know, you're supposed to be happy with them. You rejoice. Like, like, this is a class that's full of people who are already willing to change their mind and they wouldn't be sitting here in the first place. So really, we're just supposed to be rejoicing with each other. That's what we do with people who've already decided to wake up. You rejoice with them. I'm so happy anybody else has decided to have some sense beside me. <laughs> I will certainly rejoice with them. Then it says, now, anybody that's already willing to change their mind, he says, well, they have become teachers of God with you. So a person that's willing to change their mind has already become a teacher of love with you. So you are teachers of love with me. I want to change my mind. You want to change your mind. Let's rejoice because we're all demonstrators of love. Then it says, now, the, 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 demo, the demonstrator of love has, however, a more specific function for those who do not understand what healing is. Now, now, in other words, now what do you do with the people who don't want to change their mind, who are still blaming everyone else for everything that they're going through? Good question. It says, well, you have a more specific function with them. Now, who are people who don't understand what healing is? Who, what, what would be a person that did not understand what healing is? The Course says, these would be people who don't realize they've chosen the sickness. So a person who doesn't realize they're the one that's choosing to be unhappy or afraid, those are the people who don't know how to heal. A person who doesn't know how to heal is a person that doesn't know it's their own thoughts that's creating their sickness, their lack of peace, isn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the person who doesn't understand what healing is, which I would say is a large percentage of the general populace. <laughs> okay? It's the Republicans' fault, it's the Democrats' fault, it's black folks' fault, it's white folks' fault, it's Asians' fault, it's Hispanics' fault, it's everybody's fault. The, 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 it's everybody else's fault people are the people who are unaware of what true healing is and where true healing comes from. And when I'm like that, that's going to really pick up on the thing. Just go ahead and get your hand full of that. Okay. So the people who don't understand what healing is are blaming. So what do you do when you're around people who are blaming? You probably get an opportunity tomorrow at work. <laughs> he says, what do you mean? He says, there are people who do not believe that they've chosen sickness. On the contrary, they believe that sickness has chosen them, nor are they open-minded to this point. I know it's being done to me. I didn't do it. The body tells them what to do, and they obey. In other words, my body feels a certain way, and it's my body that's dictating the way I feel. It's not me that's dictating the way I feel. It's my body that's dictating the way I feel, not me dictating the way I feel. It's something outside of myself dictating the way I feel, not me that's dictating the way that I feel. And he says, and these people don't have any idea how insane this concept is of everything happening to you that you have nothing to do with. 
says if they even suspected it, they would be healed. I love that. If we even suspected the truth, we would be healed. If you even suspected it, not, not believed it, understood it, this book said, if y'all <laughs> even suspected the truth, y'all would be healed. This book is telling us we don't even suspect the truth. <laughs> It's kind of hilarious when you look at it. It's, like, it's, so, it's so beautifully written while it insults the fool out of you. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 love, I love the way it does. It's like, it looks so holy. It looks so holy. It just be insulting you left and right. You know? It's like, uh, if y'all even suspected the truth, y'all situation would be better. You don't even suspect it, Earl. Suspect it. You suspect people, but you don't suspect the truth. Check that out. You suspect people, but you don't suspect the truth. Are you good at being suspect? Yes. Are you good at being not satisfied? Yes. yes. Well, then, of course, the miracle says, well, I don't want you to be satisfied with less than the perfect answer. Yes. I, take, your, take your developed ability to be dissatisfied, which you've honed to a fine cutting edge, <laughs> and let's use that skill to remember something cool. I refuse to be satisfied with less than a relationship with people who love me and who I love. I refuse to be mm -hmm. satisfied with less than a relationship where there's mutual respect. I refuse to be satisfied with a relationship where there's not freedom of expression. I refuse to be satisfied with anything that's less than what I deserve. Now I can use my developed ability to be dissatisfied to my advantage rather than spending all my time trying to get rid of my feelings of dissatisfaction. I could use my feelings of dissatisfaction that I already have to take me where I want to go. I'm dissatisfied with hating myself. I'm dissatisfied with feeling guilty. I'm dissatisfied with being afraid. I'm dissatisfied with not fulfilling my function in the world. I'm dissatisfied. See, use your dissatisfaction to your advantage. Since you know you know how to be dissatisfied much better than you know how to be satisfied. Well, I'm just satisfied by what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Be dissatisfied. If I do this right, then you'll be the most dissatisfied class I've ever taught. <laughs> you'll walk out of here dissatisfied with any of the crap you've been putting up with before you came in the door. That's, if I'm doing it right, you'll be more dissatisfied. Oh. That's what I want all of us to be. More dissatisfied. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last son says, yet they suspect nothing. <laughs> I love it. You don't suspect the truth, you don't suspect nothing. He says, he, says, he says, to the people who think that everything is being done to them, they see themselves as sick in any way, they think that it's being done to them, they had nothing to do with it. He says, if it, to, to, to a person with that kind of mind, the separation is quite real. It does look like it's real. All of it looks like it's real. Okay. That was the first paragraph. <laughs> Questions or comments? Or, you know, you can say it's a bunch of crock. Or you can just, you know, I don't care. So you just feel, go for it. You had your hand up first, that Quana. It's a bunch of crock, no. <laughs> <laughs> Say that for everybody. It's a bunch of crock. Okay, now we can go on to the next level. Go ahead. <laughs> what is thought on um, you're going through certain transitions that are very that se seemingly intense and the ego jumps on stage to say you feel you feel like maybe you reach a certain level of enlightenment understanding and then you go through a certain certain intense changes that you've called forth and the ego just ramps it up is is when it comes up and you feel like it's cornering you in, in, in those fear beliefs and things like that. Is it, my question is, is it okay, I guess, or nor, I don't know, normal to, to, I guess, combat with the ego and feel like, is there a way to, to deal with the ego when it comes up? If you, if you reach a realization that you can get yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's like in situations that seem most upsetting, you that's when you saying? practice the truth the most that you're studying in the book. That's when you use every exercise statement that your path is telling you to tell yourself when those things come up. Because the Course in Miracles, like every truth book, is full of instructions about things you should tell yourself 
when you're not feeling peace. What happens is when you're upset is when you're least likely to do that. Mm -hmm. So the answer is be as upset as you need to be and still go, I am entitled to miracles. I will not trade miracles for grievances. I'm asking for only what's mine. You know, mm -hmm. miracles are my right. See, I couldn't say that if I hadn't learned to say that and remember that. So there's, so there, there's, there's a point on your spiritual path where you have to study your curriculum and remember what your curriculum is telling you to do in those circumstances. Most true students don't do that. They try to make up the answer as they go along. Hope that they can come up with something to say to themselves when they're most crazy, which is when you're least likely to say anything to yourself. Mm -hmm. So right. that's when you need to say it the most because the whole purpose of the conflict is to get you to turn your back on God, to get you to turn your back on the truth, mm -hmm. to get you to forget the truth. That's the whole purpose of all the conflict. So if you were to take the conflict and use the conflict to remind you to tell yourself, I am entitled to miracles, then you're using the conflict for exactly the opposite purpose for which it was originally created. The conflict was supposed to take you away from the truth, and you're using the conflict to move you toward the truth. Because every time the conflict comes up, you go to God, you go to truth, right? So that part of your mind that's trying to use conflict to get you to forget the truth will stop coming up with the conflict if you're using the conflict to remember the truth. Now, 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 I'm telling you, if you all, if you all forget every other thing you hear me mm -hmm. say today, that was worth ten million dollars. Yes, I, I take Visa, Mastercard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want you to hear that. Yeah. If you were to tell yourself every time you're unhappy about mm -hmm. anything, it's just a trick to make you turn your back on the truth is, which is you are love, you are loving, you are lovable, you deserve happiness, you deserve the truth, you are entitled to miracles, you are entitled to be healed. If you take that stuff and say, oh, this is a trick to make me not do my workbook lesson today. Not like people will say, oh, how do you do the Course in Miracles? What I did at the very beginning was how you do the Course in Miracles. I did a Course in Miracles workbook lesson and I did what it told me to do. What could be easier than the, everything already being done for you, and all you have to do is read it and remember it? Mm -hmm. What would keep me from doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Who can tell me? <laughs> what would keep you from doing something that simple? Our beliefs. Our beliefs. Mm -hmm. How to change them. What if I don't want to change? No. Change what if I don't want to change? Wouldn't I not do the thing that would bring about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to stay the way I already am, wouldn't I not do anything that would change me? Mm -hmm. That's why. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> why don't I study? Because I don't want to change. Right. How silly, huh? You're going to fail and not succeeding. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. All of your best attempts to keep miracles and love and happiness away from you, <laughs> all the programming, all the patterns, all the childhood. <laughs> I was born a poor black boy from the south. <laughs> I was held down by the man. <laughs> That father had a drinking problem. That's why nothing goes right for me today. At some point, you're going to realize the purpose of your story was to get you to the point that you are right now. And you don't need your story anymore. Do you care about your old patterns and stories? No. So much right now that you have a problem letting go of some of your patterns. No. Mm -hmm. Get out of denial. Some of them Everybody, mm -hmm. get out of denial. Mm -hmm. Do you still have some patterns yes. that yes. you find yes. yourself still doing yes. now that yeah. you wish you could? Don't become spiritually. Y'all know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> Don't start to, I'm, spir I'm so spiritual now. What? Yeah. Me? Pattern? I love everyone. What is he talking about? <laughs> I have nothing but love. <laughs> <laughs> even, even though I was like, watch people, they go into spiritual zones. 
Oh, I love everything. I have no bad negative thoughts about anything. Sure. I do. I do. I do. Me too. And the reason why I can admit it is because I have help. I am loved. I am not alone. God is real. I'm not going to be condemned. So I can admit to errors in perception. And one of my favorite lines in the course is, how do you, how do you put that? It's hard to, sometimes they're so cool you have a hard time even saying them back. But it was something to the extent that God loved us too much to leave our salvation and healing up to each other's treatment of each other. I thought that was so cool. That, you know, he says, God loved you too much to allow you to be judged by beings who don't even know how to love. Mm -hmm. And I went, wow, thank you. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Something that loves you so much that it loves you more than anybody you're going to ever meet will at the level of the world. So I'm not going to let you be judged by people who don't even know how to love you. Mm -hmm. See, I love that. You know, it's like, I'm not going to make anything about your life, Earl, dependent on people who don't even love themselves yet. Their approval, their help, their validation, none of that. They don't even love themselves yet. How in the world are they going to judge you fairly? And who needs their judgment anyway? What difference does it make? Right. Really? So, if you're trying to let go of patterns that you've been wanting to let go of for a long time and a story you've been having all your life, remember, nobody else cares. <laughs> and that's good news. They already don't care. The only one left now is you. You're down to the last person who cares. <laughs> That's great news. As a matter of fact, they don't even know anything about your story until you tell them. Your story doesn't even, they don't even see your childhood until you make it real to get them to add their energy to it. Instead of seeing that, thinking he was ramping it up, that's a trend. So I, it hasn't just come up. It's always been in there, and now it's coming to light for me to see it. So it can go. And uh, yeah, I don't know how to do it. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? We'll go to the next part. Yeah. Again. Well, I just wanted to make a comment because, like, I was getting ready to ask a question, and then it, it was kind of like answered, and it was like, what you were saying was, was helping me because one of the biggest um, weapons that the ego uses against me is complicate complexity. It wants to complicate things because, like, I was going to ask you, well, how do I use, like, you know, when I'm dissatisfied with something, how do I use that, you know, because um, you were saying to be dissatisfied. And mm -hmm. How do I do that? Because my mind is already wanting to, like, make a formula, but, but then I started thinking about, you know, there's been instances recently where I've been dissatisfied with things, so I just pray. I just pray, and I do some of the lines in the Course, and I just pray. I ask, God, give me correct perception, Holy Spirit, decide for God for me, give me correct perception and truth in ways beyond my wildest imagination. Mm -hmm. And it's simple. Mm -hmm. But my mind wants to complicate. Absolutely. Complexity is a smoke screen. It's a smoke screen. Complexity is a smoke screen to hide the simplicity of the truth. Complexity is a smoke screen to hide the simplicity of the truth. Because if something is simple and easily easy to do, there's no excuse for not doing it, so you have to admit you just don't want to. Make it complicated and you can have the illusion you really want to do it, it's just so complex. Make it simple, you have to admit, you know what? 
I just really don't want to do it. And it's much better to say, today I'm going to practice very little spirituality. <laughs> Y'all looking for something else. That's the that's statement. Today, I'm going to sometimes practice the truth that I study, and sometimes I'm not going to want to. I'm going to have an imagined need to attack that's going to be greater than my desire to practice the truth. So watch out. Right now, I'm feeling insane. I feel like blaming and projecting. Who can I choose first? Just tell the truth. Today, at the end of what you see as a miserable day, say, this was a miserable day. Thank God it's over. And then go to sleep. <laughs> I made it miserable. I made it really miserable as I could make it. As a matter of fact, I even had some miserable companions who helped me with my misery. We did it well. We did it good. We did it with sincerity. We did it with unconsciousness. And now I'm going to bed. Tell the truth. It's not like spirit is going to send you to hell because you told the truth about your own perception today. But it sure will get rid of that perception quickly. It's the trying to be good all the time that makes you so bad. And why are you trying to be so good unless you think you already are so bad? Why are you trying so hard to be spiritual unless some part of you thinks you aren't? I realized I did all this stuff for a long time because I thought I was so bad that I had to do everything possible to be good. So I started to cause night and day because I thought I was so guilty, which is a great plan. That's what we all should do. However we feel that's keeping us from feeling happy, we should plow ourselves deep into whatever <laughs> curriculum is that makes us think we are. I know that sounds complex. <laughs> We're going to work on the complexity of my classes. <laughs> <laughs> the, here's the way you want to keep fooling yourself. The Court says, your feelings are the one right use of judgment. Mm. You can tell yourself anything, but you can be quiet a minute. You'll know how you, how you feel. feel. Yeah, you really know if you feel in peace right now. You really know if you're really feeling complete fulfillment sitting up mm. here right now. You can tell yourself, well, you can say, well, that's because of my spiritual growth and I know I'm going to this challenge. And this, you know, we can tell ourselves all the cool intellectual truths that we can come up with. That's great, beautiful. I hope you got some cool stuff you're going to tell yourself. That's what the books are for. But bottom line is you got to recognize you're miserable mm -hmm. and not happy to move toward it. It's what the court says. And I went, wow, that's so different from positive thinking. In other words, you mean I need to say what I used to say before I ever started studying the truth, but followed up with the truth? Yeah, all your life you've been doing part one. Acknowledging your dissatisfaction. You've just been missing out on part two, which is to have a truth to apply to it. Mm -hmm. We took it to, we took, this is what we did. We stopped telling the truth about what we felt and didn't practice the truth. So now we're in denial and not practicing the truth. Where at least before we got into the truth, we would say, I hate my daddy. I think he abused my mama and I hated my daddy. You see what I'm saying? A, a true student is not going to say that the once they get on the path because they think it's not spiritual in most cases. So they stop telling the truth about what they feel, but at the same time, don't pick up their book and really focus on the truth either. So now it's total denial and no truth, where at first it was at least I was telling the truth about what I felt, even though I wasn't <laughs> doing nothing about it. Now I'm in double denial. Now all kinds yeah. of crap's coming up in my life where I look at myself as being a little innocent victim to all this stuff that I don't know where it's coming from, that I, I don't know it's coming from my own denial of all the feelings that I have. Plus, I'm not practicing the truth. My life goes to hell in a handbasket, and I don't understand because I'm saying affirmation number 23. <laughs> well, hadn't it worked? I just was, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. It's the idea, too, that with, like, sometimes we act like, I don't get it. Like, you know, why would I want to be so miserable? And the thing that helped me is, is always, like, the same thing, like, my dad hates me. It's like, I'm getting something for that. Yes. So I want to mm -hmm. ask myself, what am I getting by mm -hmm. believing that? Because there's always some kind of payoff over what happened. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, what's the payoff? Mm -hmm. what, and you got and the payoff's got to be better than whatever it is you think you're going through. Mm. The payoff is always better than what. In other words, I don't care whatever I'm putting myself through for whatever reason that I could get myself out of. There's got to be a payoff in it that's greater than the suffering that I'm going through, or else I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So the payoff is greater than the suffering. It was like it was like it's like this right here. Like it says right here. Tell yourself often today I'm entitled to miracles. Then it says, ask for them whenever a situation arises in which they're called for. Then it says, you're going to recognize these situations. Since you're not relying on yourself to find the healing, since you're not relying on yourself. In other words, at some point on the spiritual path, we're going to have to start acknowledging that we didn't create ourselves. <laughs> and that we have a creator. I know. It's between us. <laughs> At some point, all of us spiritual people are going to have to start acknowledging God. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that. <laughs> because what a lot of people think in spirituality is nothing but an enlargement of their ego. They're just gathering lots of information from lots of books <laughs> so that they can figure out how to still do everything on their own by themselves without ever going to a higher power. And they call that spiritual evolvement. So they're figuring this out right now. They, they might even be listening to me trying to figure how they're going to do it. <laughs> right, why they sitting up and listening to me right now? They might be going, how can I apply it? And then it says, this is what you do. Tell yourself. <laughs> That's too complicated. <laughs> what does he mean by tell yourself? <laughs> is he talking about the high self? The lower self? The self of the cow? <laughs> what self is he talking about? What's it? And what book did that tell yourself come out of? Who, who wrote that book? <laughs> did you ever say it, tell yourself? <laughs> <laughs> what does he mean by tell you? And then he said often. What does that mean? <laughs> five times an hour? It's, it's often three times a day. What would be the right amount of often? See, the ego is analyzing his butt off. Like he doesn't know what tell yourself often today means. This is, well, tell yourself what? I am entitled to miracles. Then my mind goes, well, what do you do when you're upset? I hear you, Earl, but what do you do? <laughs> I heard you just say it, but what do you do? Okay. Tell yourself <laughs> often. <laughs> I am entitled <laughs> to miracles. <laughs> but what if I eat a cantaloupe and get listeria? <laughs> <laughs> but what do you do? See, see, see what I'm saying? It's like, it's like after, after a while, you start to see that mm -hmm. the reason why you don't hear the answer is because mm -hmm. it's not yeah. an answer you made up. Yeah. It's not an answer that the world would give us. He says, he says that, that, that people do not hear an answer until you tell them who's got to sacrifice something. Until you tell them what outside of themselves needs to be different. They don't hear you. If you don't give them an answer that says, when well, you go down to the bank president, you need some more abundance. OK, I got a friend named Rick who works at US Bank. He knows the vice president of hiring people. When you go get in touch with him and call him tomorrow at 2 o'clock, then you could possibly get a job. Everybody heard that. The answer is, if you're having a problem with abundance, tell yourself often, I am entitled to miracles. And see how much that one becomes the first one that you think of. Mm -hmm. See how much, see out of those two, which one you tuned in to the most. Mm -hmm. If you be honest, you probably tuned mostly into the one that gave a definition mm -hmm. and something out in the world that needs to be changed in order for you to hear it. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you're too spiritual. I'm not talking about the real, the real spiritual people. <laughs> <laughs> you never, never do that anymore because you did that last year. <laughs> <laughs> ever since July 4th, you've been liberated. You, know? <laughs> you never, ever blame anyone. You know? <laughs> that's, that's why you had a heart attack last week. Because you never blame or reject or have any anger that you don't know about. It's just like... <laughs> Here's the key. It says, you're going to always recognize a situation where you need to ask for the miracle. And you are fully entitled to the miracle. And whatever's bothering you right now, you're fully entitled to the miracle. Well, this is the kicker that I think that keeps us from experiencing the healing, the miracle. You want to know what it is? It's just one sentence. It says, since you are not relying on yourself to find the miracle, you are fully entitled to receive it whenever you ask. You know, it's like, it's like spirits are saying, well, just ask. All these old truth books, they all go, just ask for what you want. And if you just ask for it, it's going to show up. You just ask for it, you're going to see it. You ask for the perfect partner, they're going to be there. You visualize the right career, they're like, just ask. Even the Bible, ask. Ass, ass, ass. You know, just make me want to say, kiss my ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Why doesn't it work? It says it right here. Since you are not relying on yourself to find it, you are fully entitled to receive it. Mm. That's where I blow it all the time. Mm-hmm. I rely on my separate ego yes. self to come up with the healing, with the answer, with the thing I'm asking for. I ask for it, and then I rely on myself to get it. He's saying that's the mistake we make. We ask, and then we go, it was like me saying, go in the kitchen, and could you please go in the kitchen and get me a glass of water, and then you get ready to go and say, wait a minute, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it first. <laughs> <laughs> go give me a glass. Oh, I'm going to rely on myself to go get it. No, 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 I'm going to go get it. Go give me a glass of water. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to go get it. Well, I'm fully entitled to receive it from you when I don't no longer rely on myself to go get it. I just ask you to go get it. We go, I want love. I want peace. I want joy. I want God. I want this. I want that. I want this. We say, now, how can I rely on myself to get it? Mm-hmm. And he says, well, that's why you don't get it. You're breaking part two of the formula of receiving. Relying on your separate ego mind that doesn't really know. And that's my problem, y'all. That it means for this to work, at some point, I've got to increase my sense of connection to source. I've got to, at some point on my spiritual path, get that it's my relationship with God that is the problem, or lack of it. My lack of joining with my source is the problem. I'm so thankful that I'm beginning to recognize that for real. Mm-hmm. Not joking and jabbing, but really getting, you know what? I need to be less than satisfied with some things in my life right now. And I could be having a miracle of abundance and healing in my life, but I'm trading for grievances. I could have a miracle, but I want to keep my grievance against my mother. And I want to keep that grievance against my father. And I want to keep that grievance against this group of people over here. And I want to keep my... See, he's saying you're trading grievances. It's like, like you could have a healing miracle, you could have a miracle, you could have everything you want, but you exchanging everything you want for a grievance. I got every, Here's unlimited happiness. Would you, would you give me a grievance back for that, please? <laughs> okay. I'd rather have a grievance than a miracle. Then he says, tell yourself... Tell yourself I won't trade miracles for grievances. I want only what belongs to me. Mm -hmm. I love that too. I want the relationship that belongs to me. Mm -hmm. I want the abundance that belongs to me. Mm -hmm. I want the truth that belongs to me. I want the forgiveness that belongs to me. I want the freedom that belongs to me. I want the friendships that belong to me. To me. Mine. We've already been programmed to love to go mine. And this book turns around and says, well, say it that way. I want what belongs to me. Yeah, I want what rightfully belongs to me. Me too. To me. Not to me. And then up in upholding my right to that, I'm upholding your right to it at the same time. That's a good deal. Wow. 
I let myself be happy, then I'm upholding your right to be happy? That sounds like something love would plan, not the world. The world's plans suck. <laughs> you know that's true or you wouldn't even be here. <laughs> and the only reason why we might be here is because our plan didn't work. <laughs> if it hadn't worked, we wouldn't have been here. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. If it hadn't worked, I probably wouldn't be here. I'm here because my plans haven't worked. Right. Could that be God's way to getting us to get back to God? Yes. Could it be yes. that love's way of getting us back to the truth is for all of every doggone plan that we come up with that has nothing to do with truth, love of God, ultimately never being satisfied or successful? Yeah, I think it's a brilliant plan. It's because it's only going to be when I get to the point that I understand plans I make separate from my creator, separate from truth, are plans that will never make me happy consistently that I'll ever go for what's real. It's that last relationship that's so hellacious that it drags your little butt through the mud <clears throat> that you go, you know what? I ain't never going to do that again. <laughs> Whatever I have to study to never meet somebody like her again. I what I really I eat the truth. So you need when that happens is when you get serious. And the course is saying to us, why don't you just do the simple thing and just make the decision today that you're gonna do it without tragedy, without pain, without all that kind of stuff having to happen to you in order for you to just go ahead and volunteer to ask God the will of God. That's why the whole thing was say this over and over again. Just say it. And then at the very beginning it says you don't have to believe it. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to welcome it. So that's covered. You don't have to believe what you're saying. Just say it, doggone it. That's what he's telling me. Just say it. Say it, dude. You don't have to believe it. Just freaking say it. And then I go, but do I say it loud? <laughs> do, no, I say, often, do I say it soft? Do I say it often? <laughs> Yo, we analyze it. You know, immediately because why? Because I'm not ready to do it yet. And when I'm not ready to do something, I will come up with complexity analytical stuff. I was at a meeting the other day and I was listening to a guy talk when I was over in London. It was really and he was I was at a group meeting, it was really cool people, and it was a guy that we listened to, and it's like, I couldn't, it was like, after listening to the course and the simplicity of the course for so many years, I can't follow complex teachings anymore, mm -hmm. because I don't even have the patience to try to follow the person's line of thought through all the complicated things that they're talking about, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm so glad that I've attracted a path that says, tell yourself I am entitled to miracles. I will not trade miracles for grievances. I want only what belongs to me. God has established miracles as my right. And, and think about that. When you, when you realize that you deserve something because you have a right to it, you know, that doesn't sound like effort. That's not efforting. You know, you're my child, you have a right to my estate. You didn't work one friggin' second for that. So, when even, so every time we hear stuff like established as your right, it is right for, it's plugging into that part of our mind that says, oh, I deserve this and it has nothing to do with how well I figure this out, how well I, I understand everything that's being said or how much I'm earning this. You are going to a level of consciousness where you are gifted and it's going to blow your mind because you're not used to things being given to you. You're used to having to work your can off for every single thing that happens and you have done so well in your own spiritual progress that you're at the point that things could be given to you. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> What's the problem? You! <laughs> what do you mean, me? What you talking about, black man? I'm going to tell you what the problem is. 
Your capacity to receive, your capacity to accept, your capacity to welcome sucks, Raj. I got so much I want to give you, and you're so busy believing that at some level you don't deserve it, either consciously mm -hmm. or unconsciously, that I'm telling you simple ways for you to have it, and you still won't just say, I am entitled to miracles. I will not trade miracles for grievances. God has established miracles as my right. I want only what belongs to me. Can you say that? Yes. 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 Can you say that insincerely? Yes. yes. Can you say that without believing it, accepting it, and very half-heartedly? Yes. 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 <laughs> that's all that's being required. <laughs> Will you acknowledge yourself for hearing this much with me, Holy Spirit? Somebody and some of you might say, I don't know about that. That's what our power is. Our power is in our ability to give meaning to whatever we yes. hear. And so whatever this means to you, I assure you, you're the one that's giving it to meaning. Isn't that great? Yes. And so I'm giving it to meaning that miracles are established as all of our right. Yes. And that's what we deserve. Yes. I'm going to be an advocate for that for you, even if you don't think you deserve it. Cozy, we got cozy. <laughs> cozy truth. It was wonderful. It's cozy truth. It's cozy yeah. truth. Um, one thing, I'm, here you go. Oh yeah, I'm available too for personal one-on-one -on -one sessions. So you know, I love to get down and work with people on how to apply this stuff to their everyday reality, some real issue that they're dealing with. And I put all my classes on YouTube. If you if you just Google my name, you go to my website earlperdy.com. That's why I'm videoing this. I take all my classes and I put them online. So there, I have over 600 videos online. And sometimes people say, what, do, what can I watch? Is there anything for me to watch? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And they'll be like waiting for the next one. I say, when are you going to put the next one up? I say, oh, you've already watched all 600? <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. It's, it's like there's not videos available to be watched because it's not the latest one. <laughs> as if the truth would be different today than it was mm -hmm. a year ago. Mm -hmm. That's what's so weird when I listen back to my own stuff mm -hmm. from 25 years ago. I was saying the same thing in 1980. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, but I'm a totally different person in my realization and recognition of what's being said. But the truth didn't change at all. The only thing that changed was me, the way I was seeing what I was saying. But it was just as helpful and valid then as it is now. So, I'd like to take a couple of minutes and then we're going to run out into the world and to just do what we were told mm -hmm. without believing it and without necessarily sharing it. But if you never come back to another class, remember this. It's about remembering, not analyzing. It's about remembering, not necessarily understanding. It's about remembering and not about relying on yourself anymore to receive it. The more you rely upon yourself to receive the miracle or the answer, the less you can receive it whenever you ask for it. Because <laughs> if I'm the one who holds the bookmark and you got to rely on me to give it to you, and you, and you try to rely on yourself to give yourself something that only I can give to you, you can't have it whenever you ask for it. But you can have it whenever you ask for it if you let me give it to you. Because I'm the one who has it. I'm the creator of it. That's what our creator is telling us. It's, I'm sorry, at some point, you're going to have to ask me. I have it. Your happiness, your relationships, your peace, your health, every, and every time you rely on yourself for what only I can give you from within you, from within you, then you can't have it whenever you ask for it. You can only have it when you try to have we make it happen, which ain't gonna happen. That's why this is scary, y'all. That's why it's frightening to us. Because we've been taught as adults that we must rely on ourselves. Every adult has learned a lesson in the world. So we're looking for answers that are us doing it ourselves. This curriculum is the end of that idea. So the Course in Miracles is not 
in my perception, for a person who doesn't want a relationship with their higher power. They need to just go study something else. Because this is the easy path. They want the hard path. I want the easy path. They want the hard path. I want the easy path. Yes? I did have a question. Mm -hmm. When you're asking for your miracle mm -hmm. and expecting them, mm -hmm. then are they are you experiencing them as something that happens um, physically, like the car will start for you, you know that kind of mm -hmm. thing? But, or is it a message? It it, well, from a course perspective, what you're asking for is the correct perception. Okay. What you're really asking for is a way to see whatever is happening that will allow you to feel enough peace to hear your own inner guidance that's coming from God. So the Course says its purpose is peace of mind because it's only when you have peace of mind that you can hear the voice for truth that every one of us has. It, it says we're being instructed every second on, on whatever it is we think we're concerned about. Every second. He says, but, but we don't hear it because we're listening to what we are making up and what we learn from the world. So when you ask for a miracle, you're asking really for another way to see whatever it is. And the reason why it's called a miracle is because it is a miracle if we change our mind. That's what I love about it. It is a miracle when we see things differently. Because we're so invested in being right. You know, so the optimum state would be for you to have a way of looking at things that didn't block the healing, which may come in a physical way or it may not. The ultimate level of peace would be your having peace whether the car started or did not start. Every time you set it up where your peace can only happen when some exterior condition changes, you're actually reinforcing your ego. Mm -hmm. That's actually a reinforcement of the ego. So step one is, let me get my perception corrected so that I can have peace of mind, so I can hear the Holy Spirit telling me, go here, go there, do this, do that, if it is something to be done on the outer. Okay? So, you, the guidance in the form it comes in will vary according to what's the best way to get to you. The focus on allowing yourself to have a correct perception is what's consistent. Rule number one, I am entitled to miracles. I won't trade miracles for grievances. I want only what belongs to me. God has established miracles as my right. See, that's what I need to understand, that no matter what seems to be happening right now, God has established healings as my right, a solution as my right, help as my right. I am not alone. There is a love in this world that's beyond this world that I can depend on beyond any person in this world. And then it comes through people in the world. <clears throat> That's what's so cool about it. And once you get that, then all the channels show up. And it comes to you every way you can get to you. That's what you say. Love, come to me any way you can, any way you can, any way you can, any, way, any time you can, any where you can, any how you can. Love, love, I'm willing for you to come through me, to me, through me, to me, through me, to me, anywhere, from anywhere, from anywhere, anyhow, anyhow, in ways I didn't even think of. Come to me, love. Love, in ways I didn't even think of. Put that stuff in it. Say, in ways I, can, I don't even know. Come to me in ways I, healing come to me in ways I wouldn't even suspect. That's where you want to start talking. You want to get away from that. I think it should happen the way that I have concluded that it should occur. <laughs> it's the slowest way in the world to have a healing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You could ask me for a glass of water. I could just hand it to you right here, you know. But you didn't think of that way because you thought the water should come from through the sanctuary and from the kitchen. So you've decided it should come that way, but actually it would have been just quicker for me to go, here. And that could be true for whatever's bothering you in your life right now. Whatever it is, there could be a faster way for the solution to happen than what you are thinking of if you no longer rely on yourself alone for the miracle. And if you do this, I am entitled to miracles just as an example. That is symbolic of your willingness to be healed. It's not causing no healing. 
Saying I am entitled to miracles is not causing the healing. Saying I am entitled to miracles is symbolic of your willingness to let God take over, Holy Spirit take over. That's what it is. It's giving permission. Look at it like when I do my workbook lesson, I'm giving God and love permission. And you'll find your motivation might change. Rather than if you look at it as if me doing it just right is what's going to make it happen. <laughs> that it, no, I'm doing my workbook lesson as a symbol of my willingness to have this be true. And that doesn't require belief or understanding. That's the slow way now. It's good. It served you for good for a long time. It's time for you to go to another level of consciousness now, y'all. Yeah. This easier. <laughs> Say it, no, you don't understand it or believe it or like it or even if you resist it. That's easy. So we're going to do three, I am entitled to miracles. And I want you to say this insincerely <laughs> and with the, less, the, the least amount of enthusiasm <laughs> as you can muster or with as much enthusiasm as you can muster. Is that fair, is that fair enough? Three times, three times. Let's see. Oh, on three. One, two, three. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give it up. Give it up to you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You, 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 are available. <laughs> this is my this is my contact list. Please sign it so you can actually let you know about workshops and classes and other things we're doing. 